Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to another video in the Golang series. And hope your day is going good and this is a new day for me, probably just the next video for you. Let's go ahead and the final topic that we are going to touch in this section is going to be struct. And structs are really important because they are the alternative versions of classes and we don't have classes in Golang, we have structs and they are super useful. Now before we go further in this video, let me remind you one thing that I will repeat the structs uh, probably two more time at least. Once we have understanding of the functions, then we again will come back onto structs and we'll learn a little bit more. And once we move into the section of API, then we're gonna talk a little bit more on the struct. If this sounds too complex to you, just remember, we will again revisit the structs and this is not the only video about struct. We have a little bit more knowledge to get, but right now we don't have those foundations yet. So let's get the basics of it. Let's go ahead and move on. And just like always, we'll have a new folder and this will be my structs my structs yep wrote that correct <laughs> and let's go ahead and create a new file into this and just like always main.go let's open this file into integrated terminal just like always i know this is so boring but we have to do it always i have no other option and let's say this is my structs and structs are really easy to work on with and you'll find that yeah they are like super easy to go work with that let's have a package and after the package, we'll have a function which will be saying the main. And let's have fumpt.println and that will say that structs in Golang. Now, a couple of interesting things that you should really absolutely know about it, uh, that there is no inheritance inheritance in Golang. This is the most important thing and this is the most foundation. And apart from this, also there is no super uh, or, or the concept like parent. No, we don't have those. These are the concept of classes. And in the foundational architecture of Golang, they believe that when you actually inherit something, uh, it makes code a little bit difficult to understand and people need to look at it into multiple files. But the Go follows a simple concept that whatever is on the screen, you should be able to understand that almost completely. Surely, we do have separation of the code as well, don't you worry on that part. Uh, but yes, this is the most important thing that you should know, no inheritance, there is no super, no parent, no child. Uh, these concepts don't exist in the Golang, so just go ahead and move on. Okay, now how do we define struct? First, we use a keyword of type, and uh, this, is, this is a keyword which is being used a lot in this. Then we are going to say user, and then we simply go ahead and say, I want to define a structure, and you just use the curly braces to define the structure. Now let's go ahead and define a structure for a learn code online user. So in this, I'll be having a name, which will be type of string. Then we'll be having an email, and this email will be of type string, nice. And we'll have a status that whether the user is verified or not, whether he has clicked on the email for verification or not. So that should be a bool. And after that, we'll have an age and I'll hit the tab and I'll say int. Now, as you can see, these are not properly aligned and this is the way how we do it. As soon as you write the name and hit the tab key, it will move on to your different tab and then it will get this. But the good thing is that as soon as you're going to save this, this automatically will line up much more easier to read up. A couple of things that you might have missed up here. Notice here I have used the user as capital U. This is the most common thing because obviously this is like a class or a template that you'll be using. So it needs to be exported out. And also you are saying that all these fields that I'm having here, they also can be accessed by anybody. So that's why you are actually going ahead and putting up all the first letter as the capital in the name, email, status, and age. So yes, this is a very common thing to miss out, but again, keep an eye on first capital letter. They are super easy to miss, but they are most important thing. Okay, so that's it. That's your structure is defined. Let's go ahead and try to utilize the structure in a couple of different ways. First and foremost, let's go ahead and say, I create a user Hitesh, which is going to be following this structure. So we use the Walrus operator and we say that I want to create a user. Now you have to provide all the data in the similar fashion that you have defined a structure. So in this case, first it's asking me for name. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, this is my name. And then it asked me for email. So I'm gonna say Hitesh at the rate go.dev. I don't have this email, but I wish I could have, <laughs> but let's just go for this one as of now. And let's go ahead and move on to, is he verified as he clicked on to the email verification? Yes, that is true. And age, I'm gonna go ahead and say probably 16. That's fine. Okay, so this is all we got. And let's go ahead and do a fumpt 
of Hevesh and see that how does it look like when we try to print on the console uh, of this one. So let's go ahead and say go run main.go. And uh, there we go. So this is all it. Pretty simple. A simple curly braces and you get all of your struct or structures just out here. Now obviously you can go ahead and print out uh, special details in a little bit more format or more easier way to read them up. So let me go ahead and show you that. So what we can do is we can simply go ahead and say I want to print not ln but print f and and I'm gonna say oh I need to say it in Hitesh details are and then you can go ahead and just say that I want to grab all the details. So in this case you can use the person remember we were using the sign of person v but in case if it is a structure then you can use plus v. This will give you much more detail and don't worry in just a minute we are going to print that out and it will give you much more detail in depth about it. So let me go ahead and if I can write my name <laughs> there we go. So this should be all if I can put a comma. Let's go ahead and see what's the difference between them. Let me clean up the screen and as you can see this is the detail what you get with the print line and this is the detail which you get uh, when you use the plus v syntax. It also gives you not only the values but also the structure and what are the naming convention being used here. So this makes life sometime a little bit easier. So this is a very common syntax. You'll be using it a lot. And in case you want to use or want to see just the one value out of this entire structure, obviously you can do that. There is no big issue. Let's go ahead and duplicate this line and we're going to say that something like this name is and then we are going to use percent v again if you want the entire details along with the parameter what like name email and everything then you use percent plus v otherwise just go for the person v name is and we're going to say and email is and again another key placeholder person v let's go ahead and remove all of this and let's fill in the blanks so the first one is hitesh and we're going to say dot and make sure you use the capital letter because they are being exported and another value that we need to fill up is emails, so dot email. There we go, told you, really, really simple, really easy. Let's go ahead and clean this up and run this one. So it says uh, name is Hitesh, obviously, and the email is Hitesh at the rate uh, go.dev, I wish, but this is not my actual email. So there we go, this is the really basics of it, and the only thing that you should remember or keep an eye on, that there is no inheritance, first and foremost, and the second thing is keep an eye on the uppercase letter. Now right now we don't have knowledge about the functions or aliasing, there are a couple of things and syntax that goes on in here, for example, you can go ahead and add these backticks and do some fancy stuff up here, we will definitely do that, but in the API section, not just up here. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.